So last time we introduced this notion, I leads to J, and the goal was to come up with a decomposition of the state space that helps us to understand the evolution of the Markov chain. So let's recall the definition. So first we defined what is called a, a heating time of the state G. So you take any state in a Markov chain on the state space, Hitting time of the state J is tau J, which is the first time the Markov chain equals G. Now this infimum is taken over n bigger than or equal to zero, so n equal to zero is also allowed. Now here, there's one point that I stressed last time also, is that it may so happen that starting from some I, X never becomes J at all. In this situation, if this happens, then we will call this infinity. Okay, this, this heating time to be infinity. So in other words, we are using the convention that infimum of, a, of an empty set is infinity. Now I leads to J basically means that starting from I with positive probability, the Markov chain hits J. So in other words, if you start the Markov chain from I, which is denoted by this probability PI here, it hits J with a finite amount of time, within a finite amount of time with positive probability. So in other words, starting from I, tau J, the heating time of J is less than infinity, has positive probability. So this is the definition of I leads to J. Now, the notation would be this, and as we talked about last time, there are lots of synonyms that can be used. J is accessible from I, J is a consequent of I, J can be rich from I, etc. There are more, various textbooks use various names. And if you look at Sid Resnick's book, Adventures in Stochastic Processes, he uses this one, J is accessible from I, but we will stick to this I leads to J. It's very simple to state and very simple to write. Now, one thing that needs to be observed is that since n equal to zero is allowed here, therefore, if I equals J in this case, in, in this situation, then tau I would become zero with probability one, okay? So, if you start from i, of course, x0 is i. So therefore, tau of i is going to be 0 with probability 1. And therefore, it's finite with probability 1, in fact. And therefore, i leads to i. So this shows that the relation leads to is actually a reflexive relation. This is going to be very important, as we will see. And that is the main reason why n equal to 0 is allowed in this definition of heating time. Okay, so how do we check whether I leads to J or not? And as we talked about last time, it's completely determined by the transition matrix. All you have to do, you have to compute its powers and check whether I leads to J in any of the powers of P, in the sense that if there exists an N, non-negative integer N such that the n step transition probability from i to j is positive. If that happens, then i leads to j. And conversely, if i leads to j, then some transition probability, some n step transition probability has to be positive. So the advantage of this proposition is that it completely characterizes accessibility using the transition matrix. It doesn't have anything to do with the first hitting time, tau g. And that's much easier to check when you see examples. Now note that we also talked about it last time. If i is not equal to j, then pij0 is 0 because pij0 is just the conditional probability of x, xn equal to j given that xn equal to i. Right? So that is 
definitely zero if i is not equal to g because x and cannot be both i and j at the same time so therefore this proposition when i is not equal to j gets reduced to getting such an integer n which is positive such that this happens so in other words if you take two different states i and j then i leads to j if and only there is a positive integer n such that the n step transition probability from i to j is positive this is because whenever i is not equal to j pij of zero is zero so therefore that's not going to contribute in this proposition at all okay so another useful property that follows from this proposition actually is that this relation i leading to j is actually transitive so in other words if i leads to j and j leads to k then i leads to k now this is a very easy consequence of this proposition so let's prove it so if you use this criteria of accessibility which is the proposition we can get m and n both non negative integers such that pijm is strictly positive and pjkn is strictly positive and this is just because i leads to j and j leads to k now let's look at pik of m plus n because of chapman kolmogorov equation this is nothing but sum over all l in s pilm times plkn okay so basically you go from i to k in m plus 1 steps and you first go from i to l in m steps and then go from l to k in n steps now of course l can be anything in s so therefore you have to take an n sum okay now this is of course bigger than or equal to pijm times pjkn because this guy is one of the summands here everything is non negative so therefore this is bigger than or equal to this now by the choice of m and n both of these are strictly positive so therefore this product is also going to be strictly positive which will show that this pik m plus n is strictly positive and m plus n again is a non negative integer therefore by using the the criteria of accessibility once more we get that i leads to k it's a very easy proof as we can see it just uses this criteria of accessibility and chapman kolmogorov equation that's all 